It's electrically conductive, it's super transparent, and it is remarkably stable to air, water, uh, and moisture conditions. People think of plastics and they ordinarily think of structural materials, bottles, bags, but they don't usually think of plastics as being things that can actually conduct electricity. In this paper, we're using a radical polymer, which is a fundamentally different kind of chemistry and mechanism for forming a conductive plastic. Conducting polymers are used in a lot of different applications. They can be used in displays, they can be used in batteries, they can be used in everything you might think around you that has been traditionally used for silicon and things of that nature. And where they work better is when you want to have something that either transmits light very well or emits light very well is usually where they find the most commercial appeal. Now we're able to coat this thing and it remains transparent at relatively large thicknesses and because of that it's easier to make completely uniform films that don't have any defects. Then you have something that you can sell and especially for high-end electronics you want to make sure that you don't have any defects. The current state of the art is something called ITO and that's very different from the material that we're talking about today because that's a rigid inorganic material whereas we're using a polymer. So in terms of cost our polymer is potentially much less expensive than ITO. However, our material isn't quite as conductive as ITO. It is competitive with other plastic conductive materials and it's orders of magnitude better than the next best radical polymer. So for this class of conductive polymers, we've increased the conductivity orders of magnitude to be competitive with the best plastics. We still have a bit further to go to compete with inorganics like ITO.